Oh, I'm gaining weight and losing sleep. Welcome to my home, strugglers. Please try to be respectful while you're here. Today, I think I wanna just sit and have a chat. Just a little chat. How's that sound? Is that okay? And I will be joined by my friend who, who will remain nameless. Hi. I'm kinda of just like an experiment. I will see how it goes. So I did a little Patreon Zoom hangout back in May, and one of the topics that we stumbled upon was old, like, Bible shows for kids. And it seemed like most of us in that hangout had grown up watching things like Veggie Tales or 321 Penguins. A couple people remembered seeing The Donut Man and just hearing that name gave me whiplash. And apparently we were the only two poor souls exposed to Salty the Singing Songbook. Hallelujah. Awful. Why did they make that? So creepy. It got through so many people. <laughs> yeah, at any level in the production of that, somebody could have said, this isn't it. This isn't the one. Maybe something a little less traumatizing. As I mentioned last year in my PBS Kids video, I didn't have um, cable for most of my childhood, so I watched a lot of public television growing up like uh, Cyber Chase and Maya and Miguel and Between the Lions. And then as a family, we would watch whatever was on network TV, like Survivor, The Amazing Race, uh, Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> Yeah. Do something well Shut. done. Can you just shut the fuck up for 30 seconds? Good, fun family show, Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> Service and standards are far more important than some fucking bimbo. But for most of the day, all that was really on was like Days of Our Lives or other dumb soap operas or like weird home improvement shows. Not the show Home Improvement. That was on too. I liked I liked watching that. A anyway, <laughs> for most of the day, especially in the summer, if I wasn't playing with action figures for 10 hours straight or doing something outside. Um, there wasn't really anything on TV is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> My siblings and I ended up watching movies a lot and not even necessarily a lot of movies. We would just watch the same ones over and over. My younger brother, Greg, always wanted to watch The Wiggles. Um, my older sister, Laura, always wanted to watch A Cinderella Story. And I always wanted to watch either There Goes a Fire Truck or Attack of the Clones. One of the few things that we would usually agree on watching though was Bible Man. The purple and gold lightsaber wielding scripture machine Bible Man. And I freaking loved it. <laughs> Let's talk about Bible Man. So there were three main live action series that ran from 1995 to 2010. The Bible Man Show, Bible Man Adventures, and Bible Man Power Source. And I will argue until the day I die that the only ones that truly matter are Bible Man Adventures, episodes four through 12. And even that is a little bit of a stretch because the last few, I'll talk about it. So who is Bible Man? Well, okay, thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> I will just let the incredible intro video speak for itself. This is the story of Miles Peterson who had everything So he's a super rich guy who builds a Bible cave and dedicates his whole life to fighting evil. And if that sounds familiar, it's not. He's got this sick ass costume that I will argue until the day I die is the sickest hero suit on the face of the planet, don't at me. His weapon is this cool glowing energy sword a saber made of light, if you will. God's light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if a lightsaber sounds familiar, it's not. And the sword of the spirit. We owned one of these. I have footage of Greg swinging one around. We bought a Bible Man lightsaber. Guys, we need to keep it down. My parents are trying to sleep upstairs. Anakin, I loved you like a brother. Guys, you gotta keep it down. Some of us have to sleep. Guys, I told you we had to stop reenacting after episode two. It's actually pretty impressive, and I didn't know this as a kid, but Bible Man himself, Willie Ames, is also the writer, director, and producer of, like, all of these. I don't know, I have a funny feeling in my spirit. It's, it's like the calm before the storm. Well, that was amazing. How did you know that was about to happen? I wrote it that way. What a busy guy. It's a little weird when people write themselves to be like a badass hero though. Yeah, my mom always uses the example of Adam Sandler in 
the longest yard. But either way, he's working like a dog, so big ups to him. The bad guy in this first one is El Furioso, and he uses this like magical golden dust stuff to make people angry. It's my grandson, Jordan Downey. He isn't himself lately. He's always in some kind of trouble at school. I wonder if there was some previous incident that may have triggered something with him. I don't know if this helps, but about a year and a half ago, both of his parents were killed in a car accident. Oh boy, this feels like those anti-bullying videos that we did a video on last year. <laughs> Joey's family was involved in a car accident. His little sister was killed instantly. Joey died on the way to the hospital. <laughs> Eunice? Full armor sequence. I'm on station. Executing full armor sequence. Waste, Waste belt of truth. Waste belt of truth. Breastplate of righteousness. Breastplate of righteousness. Helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. Eye black of sacredness. <laughs> <laughs> Good gravy, my guy. You look like you're on your way to a My Chemical Romance music video shoot. <laughs> so, what are you guys Jordan. doing? Jordan. Oh, man, am I in trouble? What are you doing here? Jordan, your grandmother is very worried about you. Can you imagine you and your friends just minding your own business and this frickin' guy comes out of the shadows to scold you? Why does he have to be in full hero gear for this? Is his identity a secret? No. <laughs> he might have to fight this kid. You don't know. Run an analysis of Jordan's ball cap. I want fibers, elements, chemicals, the works. Scanning. This analysis might give us a better idea of what's going on with Jordan. But I thought it was mainly due to the death of his parents. You see, Cypher, there's always something more. If there weren't, then the episode would basically end right here. We don't want that, do we? I do love how self-aware this show is. Like, it knows that it's being silly. We've got to lure this guy into the open and then stop him before he destroys Jordan. But why? Why him? What's this all about? If this gold fury were to somehow get into the wind and then cover the entire city, it would be total chaos. It could be total chaos. Why does he keep repeating everything I'm saying? Why do I keep repeating everything he's saying? It feels very much so like the 1960s Batman. Obviously for more reasons than one. Okay, now it's time for some action. Easy, Cypher. Proverbs 19.2 says that enthusiasm without knowledge is not a good thing. Let's do something. Take it easy, Cypher. Let them beat each other up a little bit. I want to see some blood. Every episode has a song included for some reason. I guess just because it's fun. Um, and you know what? They're not bad. They're usually just parodies of pop music but it gives the villains their time in the spotlight, which is always fun. Which actually is weird that they make the bad guys so endearing. Yeah, wait, what? I didn't even realize that. The villains are the best part of this show. This sinner shouldn't be the most likable character, Bible man. I shouldn't want to be like this guy. I always wanted to be like that guy. <laughs> actually, let's, let's talk about the villains for a second. All of the villains are modeled after some kind of sin or unsavory attitude or behavior, I guess. Their evil goal is always something along the lines of like making the people of Gotham's Gotham City. <laughs> I think the town is called Randall, Randalltown. They want the people of Randalltown to stray as far away from God's light as possible, obviously. And the lore runs so freaking deep, it's insane, okay? So try to keep up. Like I said, this is El Furioso, and then it's the Prince of Pride, and then it's Luxor Spondroth. But you see, all three of them are actually Luxor Spondroth. You following me, camera guy? Apparently every time Bible Man and his team kill one of these guys, they come back as a new version. Did you just, is Bible Man killing people? I guess if they keep respawning, they're not technically dead. Except for in episode seven, they do, they actually kill Luxor. Like for good, he does not come back. But then the devil must have been like, what the, home? <laughs> I'm out here trying to cook up some nefarious schemes and you guys are running around killing all my henchmen. What's a guy to do? So Luxor gets replaced by this absolutely wretched monster. This just repulsive demon. And just so we're clear, almost none of what I just said is explained in the movies themselves. I had to look it up online. What I assume is that this guy was just such a good actor, such a good villain, that they wanted to keep him around as much as possible. 
So that's why they kept bringing him back. And now that I think about it, I'm not sure if Bible Man was ever actually fighting this guy with a lightsaber for real. Maybe it was all just a metaphorical battle where he's, you know, fighting his inner demons or something. Because I don't think any other people other than the Bible crew actually see the villains. The bad guys just kind of work in the shadows to make people, you know, rude or arrogant or selfish. Maybe it's all just symbolic, symbolic battles. You think maybe you're reading too deeply into it? Uh, yeah, probably. What did what? Why do my parents have to die? I miss them so much. I know. And through Jesus, we can all be together again. One day. Today. I don't have all the answers, Jordan. I'm just a man. Oh, you are not just a man. Look at you. You're an absolute tank. Look at that eight pack and those biceps. Don't sell yourself short, Batman. Batman? Freudian slip. In the next episode about people having like a big ego and being prideful, um, there's this kid who's making a comic book about Bible Man. And this is what he says about the drawings. Exceeds all expectations. Man, you look larger than life. Yeah, I know. But that's a problem. These sketches draw attention to me instead of focusing on God. And they should draw attention to him. Oh, please, dude. You are not allowed to run around in a bright purple and yellow costume in broad daylight fighting crime and then act like you don't want the attention, my guy. Come on, man. You could have at least muted your color scheme or something. Be more convincing. And don't forget about the later episodes. Oh, crap. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So in the later episodes of this series, they update his suit and this is what it looks like. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Does this look like a guy who doesn't want the attention? Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that hypocrite. Okay, I'm done. And now your right hand man is putting on a freaking laser light show all about you and your team. Does the narcissism ever end? Shit. It is, it is pretty catchy though. I remember this movie in particular making me believe that a fishing net is a viable weapon in battle. This is where they introduce Bible Girl and that's what she uses. She uses a net. With how incredibly creative and imaginative the set pieces and costumes are in these movies, you'd think they could come up with something better than a freaking fishing net? I used to run around the house with a yellow blanket and just whack stuff with it. Which, in hindsight, my parents were probably glad that I wasn't wielding a sword or something all the time, so maybe it wasn't all that bad. This episode is also when Luxor Spondroth is officially introduced, and it is hands down the best episode. Don't at me. Sewer Califuturistic Science Laboratory. Isn't there a sonic or something like that? Yeah, but we can't use it or the mouse will sue. What a dummy. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it with the red stuff. We're gonna get it with the microbian. I feel like I'm all twisted up in knots. Well, let me tell you a little secret, man. It's because you're squeezed into those silly, girly tights there. I have friends in high places. I have no friends. I don't know. Maybe you think that's just pure cringe, but I think it's pretty good. For some reason, after they kill off Luxor in the next episode, this whole show just takes on a much darker tone. It's no longer fun. It's kind of just like creepy. Like it almost makes me uncomfortable to watch. I want you to feel the sting of my I always noticed that it got weird even as a kid and I just didn't know why, but after doing a little research, apparently the guy who plays Cypher, Brady Williams, he started writing some of the episodes instead of just Willie Ames. And on top of that, the guy who had been playing every villain in the show so far and providing so much comic relief. Oh, did you know that dragonflies can't use their legs for walking? That's so weird, right? They can stand, but they can't walk. The comic relief was killed off and replaced by this other guy, Jeff Scott, who was really talented still, but not in the same type of way. He was a good actor and everything, 
but he also started writing for the show and clearly that combination just led to a product that wasn't as good in my opinion. It went from being this campy Batman knockoff full of pop culture references and self-aware humor to this overly dramatic preach fest that took itself way too seriously. By the final episode of Bible Man Adventures, Bible Man himself, Willie Ames, had actually stepped down and, you know, passed the role on to some new guy. And I think that a lot of the show's life left with Willie. I even tried going back and checking out some of the next version of Bible Man, the Power Source one with the new guy, and it's just... There's just like nothing redeeming about it at all. It's like the whole show just kind of Seems got... pretty clear to me which era is more fun. Yeah, you know what? I, I really don't think that you actually need to be here. You Really? Yeah, I think I can handle this on my own for the most part. For the most part, though, so not entirely. I meant entirely. I didn't want to hurt your feelings. Ouch. I don't even think you're worth the time it's going to take me to edit you into this video. Ouch. There's nothing I can help with then. Well, no, I guess you could do the sponsor segment. <laughs> Oh boy, thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Does that feel like a like a stretch? Maybe a little unrelated to the content? Well, let me tell you why you're wrong. Look at this smooth as butter chest. Look at these legs, you think that just happens? Or do you think Bible Man uses the Lawnmower 3.0 water resistant cordless body trimmer? For legal reasons, I'm gonna say I don't know for sure. Nice save. But I also wouldn't be surprised. A little life hack for you, actually. You don't have to be a man to use it. Stick to the script. But what about the invigorating hair and body wash? Or maybe this delicious cologne? These are actually what I use, so if you want to smell like me, or if you want your partner to smell like me. God, stop. And introducing the new Shears 2.0 Activate Full Product Sequence. Full product sequence initiated. Tweezers of stainlessness. Round point scissors of precision. Nail clipper of portability. Nail file of versatility. Last time I shaved one of my legs to show how good the product is. This time, I am going to tweeze an entire eyebrow off. Nope, no, uh-uh. How'd I do? It was pretty good. Can I stay? Yeah, just don't say anything else. All right, guys, that was a very brief surface level look at Bible Man Adventures. I've wanted to do something Bible Man related for a long time now, but I didn't know how to approach it. Like I originally tried to just sit and poke fun at the show and like point out its flaws, but it's intentionally a silly show. So it was just kind of like I was explaining the joke, which was kind of lame. And I didn't want to come off as cynical or like mean spirited like every other person that's ever talked about this show over the years. And I really don't want this to turn into some kind of religious debate, please. <laughs> I just wanted to talk about a goofy show from my childhood, so I settled somewhere in the middle. Let's keep it lighthearted in the comments, huh? For everyone's sake, I promise your life is not gonna be better by starting an argument with a stranger in the comments, okay? I promise you. Just please be friendly and kind. If you've made it this far, Wow, thank you so much. I really appreciate you watching. If you would like to see more content, definitely subscribe, trying to hit 10 million by the end of the year. Fingers crossed, baby. And a huge thank you to all of my patrons. Those that are in the top tier are listed right here. Oh my goodness. God bless you guys. I will talk to you guys again very soon. Goodbye. Why don't you come here tonight? We'll see what happens when we turn out the light. Girl, you make me lose my